Battle control initialized. Hey, hey, people, Five Aces here. This is your self proclaimed captain speaking. Enjoy the show. I've got some high level 1v1 for you prepared today. This is a very special match, very close to my heart, if you will. And without further ado, I'm introducing on the map the Great Divide, one of the most interesting maps out in the pool today. Battling over the frozen pieces of wasteland here, we've got in the bottom left, spawning as Russia. We've got definitely not Barf. He's like Barf, only he's wearing a fake mustache. So what can you expect here? Yeah, Grand Rushes and also Mass Army. And his opponent, the playstyle doesn't differ that much, but uh, he's an Admiral at Sea who is stranded in this piece of Siberian wasteland for God knows what reason. I mean, there is some shore here. So that explains how he got stranded here. He got marooned and now he's here fighting on land. We've got as the Ukrainian pieces spawning in Admiral Mo. Welcome to the show, and this is gonna be cool. We've got the Great Divide on the menu, a map where capping orders are so important. Ooh, this is already gonna be juicy. Nice little Ren Rush on the free expansion. And there goes, there goes the neighborhood. Yep, takedown achieved. Vet 2 for the rifle infantry as well. So, what was I talking about with the capping order? This is very interesting because we've seen Barf taking a very defensive approach and taking his comm center first. It just gives you a lot of line of sight and provides um, a, a security against Grand Rushes and cheese play is, is all there's to it. And then there is the question, the eternal question, do you go for a double engineer or not? Seems like uh, Mo has opted in here because he is on two engineers already. So this means he's going to have a diminished field presence with his infantry, but at the same time, he's going to be able to patch up the bridge here at the cost of an engineer and take an early double oil lyrics plus a hospital. This is a really cool map design because those hospitals and oil derricks are so far out of the way that you have to do a deliberate attack to get rid of them, as opposed to most maps where you just a move and casually destroy an oil derrick because it's in the attack path anyway. So here they're really secluded and sheltered, and this means it makes for exciting gameplay decisions. Do I commit a, a part of my army to uh, force my opponent to react, or do I commit a part of my army to kill the oil derricks of my opponent? How many forces do I put into securing my natural expansion? Because this is a free expansion if you have an engineer, but it's prone to being rushed. And at the same time, do you put an early refinery there or not? Because keep in mind there is a gem mine in the back of your base. So it's already got really good starting eco. Uh, lends itself to tech rushes, if you will. If I allow it to say myself. And Barf is going for a very conservative approach. We're seeing the third refinery being popped probably on the gems. A calm early game, but it's a uh, very important st strategy wise. The tactics employed here are uh, a bit out of the norm for Mo because he's opted for a double engineer, and that's gonna set him behind just an extra little bit in the early game. Um, not gonna over dramatize this, but 1k investment in the early game is quite a chunk. And Barf, oh, this is the perfect counter. Barf is already on his APC here. So he's gonna be able to run down the entire forces here. And as soon as he sees the rifle infantry, it's gonna clue him in as to the presence of Mo. Is there an engineer? No, it's an empty APC. He doesn't have an engineer loaded in up in the bay. The docking bay. Oh, Barf's game sense prevailing. Immediately going for the engineer. He just knows that there is something. There's gotta be something. And the bridge is two tiles wide, so it can't be blocked off either. So this APC is gonna be here to stay. It's gonna be able to smush all the infantry. What I would like from Mo as a counter would be just packing a couple rocket soldiers into his APC and popping them like a surprise APC rocket pop can be very effective at dealing with a lonesome APC in the field. Especially, you have to consider the facing. If your opponent is facing you this way, you, you go up here and then you unload because this means that the rocket soldiers have all the time in the world to fire and aim and the APC in turn has to turn around which doesn't lend, it it doesn't lend itself to, to great turn rate or it doesn't have great turn rate, which doesn't lend itself to great escapes if your opponent unloads rockets in your face. So yeah, there's that. Both going for a radar rush first, and Mo a bit, <laughs> Mo a bit unpowered right now. Right now, didn't pay his electric bills. But that's fine, he's got his first V2 online. Yak is coming online as well, and he's also got the distinct advantage of the power bombs, which, in a game like this, always depends on how long it's gonna stall, because in the hyper late game, the para bombs are, are there to prevent your opponent from coming into the hyper late game, from just wiping armies. But if it goes into the hyper late game, your opponent gets a critical mass of Russian shock troopers. Yeah, kiss it goodnight. Oh, that's so smart. 
Barth is going for the unprotected AM Oil Derricks here. He's gonna snag himself two Oil Derricks and probably a, a hospital as well, just for free, you know. Why not? It's freebies. There is a Yuck out there for promo and it's not responding. And Barf is going for a reconnaissance flight here. He's checking the expansion slots. That's something you should always do in a, in a 1v1 if you're playing an opponent who you know is good at macro. You just send a scout in. And especially against Soviets, there is no danger of a of an early anti-air gun being rushed or an early SAM site being rushed because it's just very, very unviable. Let's put it that way. So, especially against another Soviet faction, just go for a scouting run like this. Um, the Yak is just too mobile to be caught off, caught off guard by flat trucks. So yeah, really good game sense here from Barf. Just snagging way to Elderics. Hospital should follow shortly. Yeah, this has been a very quiet early game, but it's not been devoid of strategic decisions. With the, oh, tier 3 already unlocked for Barf. That's quite early in the game, 6 minutes in. Let's see if this tech rush pays off. And Mo is just opting for the big macro. He's on six harvesters here, one harvester on the gems. That's that's fine. Ah, that's a little cheeky breaky APC here trying to unload an, an engineer, but I doubt it's gonna happen. Yep, especially not with the Tesla coil being popped. Some would argue, is it worth it? Is it worth it popping a Tesla coil just to intercept an APC? Debatable. But at the same time, this turns this into a no-go area and a no para drop area as well. So. So good enough in my book. And that's interesting, Mo has opted for the same strategy. Problem is, Barf hasn't even bothered taking his oil lyrics. So he's instead claiming the spoils of war that, uh, yeah, that uh, the engineer of Mo has unlocked. So pretty good there. Oh, four yucks. He's immediately, he's probably gonna snipe the radar dome, depends on, on the vector here. Oh, nice. All the yucks escaping so far. Yeah, oh, that one missed the mark. Only kills a stray rocket. And another one, round two! Fight! Oh, it's so close! He has to suicide in a third yak to get this done. Jesus! Alright, that was a bit more than it bargained for, but he's still in a good spot here. And a triple conyard plus the natural expansion here from the forward command for Mo. So he's opting for a full on map control. That's a full blown um, macro build, Zerg style, if you will, going for hatcheries. Just imagine there would be those would be hatcheries, and you, you needed to select the larvae and transform them into rifle infantry. Yikes! All right, so Mocha's going for the big macro game, Zerg style anyway. I bet you he plays Zerg. Haven't confirmed, but uh, but yeah. Oh, that's a nice pickup though. That's the one of the only scouting yaks of Barb who hasn't opted into that much air tech anymore after losing four of them to kill a radar. But he's got the first mammoth tank online. Also something I'd like to highlight, look at this formation here. Uh, this is Bath deliberately just setting up his all his um, defensive assets, so he can um, Iron Curtain defensively if need be, and have a really potent Iron Curtain formation. That's just really good game sense. And he's deployed a base here, so Barf... Oh, that's nice. There's a flag truck, that's, it's already vetted up, so it's gonna be able to trade relatively well here. That's pretty good. Oh, the service depot probably going down. Nope. Yak turn rate screws him over there. Oh, wow! That crash did a lot of damage. I didn't expect this amount of damage to come out of a single crash, but that was that was just dead center. That was that was a dead eye Yak crash. Killing a service depot, that's solid. And that was in, in yellow health. It's like 30% HP remaining. But... Yeah, with all that said and done, Mo still needs to contest this this heavy push here. This is spearheaded by a mammoth tank, and also, oh, those are really lethal. The V2 launchers in the back lines. Mammoth tank almost about to fire, but ultimately doesn't get the get the rockets off. What was was that a curtain being deployed? I'm not. No, okay, there it is. So Mo has lost three yaks, which is not that bad, considering he's gotten rid of three V2s. Defensive para bombs. Oh, the vector is good though. The vector is really good. Let's see, is Bob gonna respond here? Is he gonna get baited in? He is gonna get baited in. The tanks are even going back on, back in. That was a good play. That was a very good play. Disposing of a good chunk of the army. Put a para drop, yeah. Para drop on the macro refinery here. Probably able to get it. 
And we've got a bit of, bit of a base push situation going on here. That's a lot of things going on all at once. But you can see here, oh my goodness! The Iron Curtain is under fire from a Paradrop. Please don't let it fall to a Paradrop. That would just be sad. Oh no, he's not reacting. He's not reacting in time. He's too distracted dealing with this push here. Yikes. That's a completely free pick here on the Iron Curtain. There is a Missile Silo though, so Barf is opted for the full tech route. Sacrificing map control in order to get some something done here. Yeah, the Mammoth tanks are good, but Tesla coils in the back lines are gonna foil the plans. And let's count the expansions real quick. Nice eco slide as well. So, Mo is on four harvesters, five, seven, eight harvesters, and three, four, five mines essentially. One over five over four, so it's not that bad. But he has control over, yeah, there is the sixth mine. So, he's gonna outscale him in the eco department really hard right there. And this is gonna be a two flank attack, two prong there, the good old two prong. On the one hand side, we've got the tanks going in and the uh, three prong, excuse me. Uh, that one was a bit unsuccessful, but the tanks are here to stay. They've managed to kill one harvester. Second harvester going down as well. Ooh, trading a couple of yaks for the, I, um, what was that, the tech center. So there's not gonna be an iron curtain coming out anytime soon. Never mind, Barf has deployed the iron curtain already. But he's losing on this front, so. He is struggling, he is struggling hard to keep himself afloat here. Yikes, the Mammoth tank probably going down oblivious to its impending doom. Doesn't have that much armor, all things considered. Yeah. Good, good, nice, nice multi prong attack here for Mo. He's traded off his army for two harvesters, a tech center, uh, the Mammoth tanks, a couple, a couple of buildings here and there. Yeah, and with a macro as dominant as Mo's, he's in a completely fine position here to recover, even after losing all his army. He needs to not lose to the all-in push though, because this is gonna be a barf move if I've ever seen one. I think he's just waiting on the curtain. He should not trade here, he should just move back his infantry a couple inches. I mean, that's an I impenetrable wall of flame here. It's like, there's the wall of pain and then there's the wall of flame. This is straight up, oh, nice crash. Oh, that's the only airfield for barf. If this goes down, my dude. Yeah, he's in for a rough time here. Bath probably gonna lose his airfield if, if Mo pays attention to what his units are doing there. Because, again, that's just a very cheap push. Three tanks, a couple infantry, that's nothing too major. Nothing to write home about. And he's gonna kill the airfield. Very smart move, so no more scouts here for Barf. But he's got the, the dreaded plus of, the, plus of doom here. Splitting up his forces. Is Barf? Interesting, interesting. This is gonna get spicy. Alright, we're seeing the Kanyard going down a bit low. I don't think he needs to... Cur oh, he's curtained the APCs. That's a way smarter call. Offense is the best defense here. He has also held his... Uh, held his Kanyard there. So this is just gonna be a wipe on the army. And it doesn't matter how good the target micro of Mo is, which it is considering that he's picking off flame troops here and there, uh, rocket troops here and there. Yeah. These are forces overwhelming, and this base is probably forfeit, has to be pushed back. Oh! Nice snipe on the FCOM. FCOM is down and Barf completely clueless as, as to what's happened there. So he's losing more and more map control, but he has secured at least a couple victories for himself. Oh, his last yuck! Just gets out on a sliver of health. You have to pay so much attention to those pigeons of war. It's like a mosquito swarm. They can get swatted real quick. Okay, and I think that's the most profitable expansion for Mo going down. Because those were four harvesters. Yikes. That's gonna be a bit expensive. Yeah, flame turrets being deployed, just not gonna help. Seeing the Tesla coil is... Where's the Tesla? I've heard a Tesla zap. I don't know. That's a bit weird. Maybe it got, it got killed instantly? Not sure. Okay, so this base remains as a shell, but there is no MCB anymore. Mo's got his Parabombs back up. That's got- oh, that's such a spicy game here. This game is still very much open. Still very even, all things considered. Even considering Bath has went for a tech rush route. That didn't pay off big time. Oh, he's gonna lose all his army here because Bath has got 90% of his forces concentrated. Yeah! Flak trucks immediately just scurrying away the V2, obliterating it in the process. Parabombs are coming in from... Northeast? Northeast. 
Northeast on a map like this, probably the shittiest vector to, de the, to deploy in a, in a southern, uh, onto a southern front. Yeah, it's gonna take the longest time, amount of time to arrive. So Barf has had enough time and leeway to find out where the parabombs are coming from. He has spotted them just in time. And this is gonna be a pretty good timing for him. He's taking an expansion as well. And he's got a massive army here. He's got really good force concentration. How long is the Iron Curtain? Oh, the Iron Curtain is up. Yeah, the Doctor is in the house. Iron Curtain is coming up. I don't think he needed that. That was a bit overkill. Oh, Moe's Yax trading, uh, trading away all the V2s here. Last V2 going down. That was his win condition there. Oh, and there's a counter curtain for Mo. Never mind. He's still just gonna get the Conyard. The forces are just so much. And a single flame tower doesn't have the time to kill all of this. So really good target micro here by Barf. Just recognizing the situation with the, with the Iron Curtain flame tower and going around this. Circumventing this by just targeting down the forces. Really brilliant play by both. Nice snipes with the Yaks here. We've seen who cares fail with Yax last <laughs> last cast. Now we've seen Mo. Now we're seeing Mo showing us how it's properly done. He's really had a huge impact with those Yaks so far. Actually, both have because the uh, the radar dome snipe by Mo was also really uh, by Barf onto Mo's radar was also really good. So yeah, that's two bases down for Mo. This one is still mining. He needs to Barf needs to do something about this. Yeah, I should retreat his forces. He's got enough damage inflicted there. What is coming in here? That's five heavies! Five heavies roaming in there. A pack of stray heavies. You're not gonna find anything but rocket soldiers. <laughs> Goodbye, sweet prince. Good night. Good fight, good night here. Yeah, Barf is gonna lose another ref. That's painful, but... V2 survives. Escapes unscathed. Wow, Moe's captured back those oil derricks. That's smart. Didn't even recognize that. And Barf is taking a taking a gambit here. He is pulling up his only other con yard and moving it into the middle. He's lost. Oh, he's lost his gem mine there. To the power drop. So much going on at once in this game. This is the true pinnacle of multitasking in open array. You know, it's uh, it's not dissimilar to StarCraft. Only the multitasking is less in the macro and more in the unit allocation. Where are you going to put your units and when? Oh, yep. That's freebies. This roaming pack here can easily snipe a War Factory, maybe... Ooh, maybe even the FCOM. That would be so juicy. Denying a free expansion to your opponent is so important at this stage of the game. So Barf with little to nothing... Oh, and a nuke as well! Great call. Great call nuking the expansion here. Very good. Mo is trying to fend off here. But the Yaks just not gonna trade well. That's just as expected. Okay, brace yourselves. Impact. We've got impact. The Conyard survives though, so a couple cells to the left would have been advisable. Maybe he didn't scout it. But the Yak is coming in. Closing in on its target. Nope. He's not gonna take the shot here. Come on. Come on, Barf. I know you want to A move into this. Alright. Ooh, losing another Yak here. That was a bit unnecessary. Yo, this Conyard has to go down. It needs to. Service Depot, Depot finally being redeployed by Bar. There's a lot of gems that have accumulated over the, over the course of time here. Oh, haha. <laughs> squishy, squishy. It's always really good to focus down rocket troopers with your APCs. Because riflemen just can't harm them. Heavy armor and all, you know. The whole shebang. Yeah. That's good here. The Conyard is gonna fall. And this time, he is gonna take the ore refinery with him. Into a, a dank, dirty grave here. Into the Siberian wastes. 30 seconds on the power bombs, and there is... Oh, what the hell? Mo has had his Iron Curtain up. He chose not to deploy it. I'm not really sure what that was about. Just probably Miss Micro. Yeah, and Barf immediately following up with the Conyard. That's like the sign of a really, truly good player is when he when he doesn't only have a successful attack, but also follows it up with a Conyard of his own. It's like claiming this territory for yourself. Um, claiming the stakes for yourself. This is mine now. Yeah. Barf playing the good old Yankee style. Oil grabs here. Oil grabs, land grabs, the whole shebang. Oh, wow! 
three yaks immediately devouring a, 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 um, an MCV is what it's called, not an APC. There is another one though, so Barafiz must have gone for a double MCV there. Must have been really unsure as to how to proceed. Oh, Parabombs, he's spading in. He's spading him into the Parabombs, let's see. This is the third Parabomb round. The first one was really successful, the second one, not so much. The third one gets a single lonesome Rocket Trooper. Goodbye, we hardly knew ya. So this means that Barf is able to recover here. He's gonna be able to take his his second expansion there. Very good. And the Mosquito Swarm is still so lethal here for uh, for Mo. He's got five Yaks, a sixth coming online. He has had huge impact with those Mosquitoes so far. Just putting it out there. Yeah. This is a very forward, um, in-your-face tech spot. Because Barf doesn't have much of his units allocated to this spot here. And he's got all his tech there, sans the radar. It's like the only thing that he, he could retain there. In, in case of an attack. Also, Barf is so light on the uh, on the Yaks here. He still has got a fair amount of cash there. Yeah, there we go. He's trying to target down the, the Kani out of Barf, but it's just not enough. Oh, Iron Curtain! That was premature. There was not enough gas left in the tank here for Mo. Look at the destroyed tab though. Barf has done a fantastic job trading here. This has been a fantastic game from both so far. Uh-oh, the only War Factory being targeted, being under fire. Is he gonna survive? No, he's not gonna survive. And the Iron Curtain is there just there to seal the deal. Add insults to injury. <laughs> Add missiles to, to injury, yeah. Add ignition missiles to injury. There we go. Pretty good so far. Barf has switched over to um, to armor melting shockies. I mean, they're not as armor melting anymore as they used to be. So the mammoth tank is still a solid counter, but mixing in a couple of rocket troopers is gonna fix that problem momentarily. There's another para drop there. Oh, nuke truck by Mo. This is so smart. Mo Mo has scouted the army with his uh, with his pigeons of war. What is he going for there? Oh my goodness, this nuke truck is going to be devastating. Making use of the... Perfect use of the uh, special special abilities of Ukraine. This is just a showcase. Oh! <laughs> Everything melts. It melts. It burns. And those mosquitoes of war have been... Uh, it's like eight now. They've been super successful. They've just sniped all the tech structures there. And Admiral Mo just redeploying here. Yeah, there's no critical mass of shockies anymore after the big meltdown they had when being uh, being lightly grazed by a by a nuke truck. You never want to do that. I really love seeing this game. Neither of the players is being pushed back entirely. They're always just fighting it back. Gotta fight the power back, as Rage Against the Machine used to say. Another harvester snipe. All right, and this time it seems like Mo has got the forces overwhelming here. He can brute force this. He's got the APC at this position again, but buddy, bad news, news flash, the bridge is still not repaired. You're not gonna get those Derricks, not as Soviets. That's a bit of an imbalance, by the way. Something that's still really bugging me in this game is that the Soviets don't have access to aerial, unit, aerial infantry transportation. Oh, that's gonna be a field day for the, for the flak trucks here. That's what they're made for, just kiting and fighting. Tight to live another day. Barf is gonna take this engagement in storm, but holy shit! How many yaks? Let's do the math real quick. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven yaks now. Yikers! Yakers. That's just gross. That's critical yak mass, and one of them is on vet 2, so it can outrun anything in the game. Period. Like, if it if it were technically possible by by the game engine standards, this one could outrun flag pellets. But yeah, it isn't. Flag pellets are kind of insta-hit. Or at least almost close to insta-hit. So this is equalized the Oh my goodness, another demo! Oh, <laughs> just in time. Enjoy the fireworks, my friends. As we're having a couple scorched trees here, by the way. Cool effects on those trees. That they're now being scorched instead of just... Instead of just catching on fire and then nothing. Oh, perfect counter on the uh, Iron Curtain counter on the missile silo. This is just great display of skill here from Mo. 
And Barf is probably gonna wait for another round. He's gonna wait until the Iron Curtain times out. But Mohu's found the perfect counter. He's just in time, built an engineer. Gonna send the engineer in. And thanks, good fight, good night. The missile silo is alive. The hills are alive with the sound of missiles. That's a bit of a, that's overkill. But hey, that's that's some commitment there. What the hell? These are all shockies. This would have been way, way worse. He's lost. Yeah, he's lost like two, two yaks. That's so, so worth in this book. Yeah, this would have been so much better if uh, those were rocket troopers. But yeah, shockies. Uh oh, there's gonna be a power drop as well, and this one is gonna put a dent into Barf's army here. Ooh, mammoth tanks barely surviving, but Barf calling the GG regardless. Yeah, he's lost another expansion here. He's lost. Two ore trucks to just a random power drop. He didn't have this expansion up, and Mo just had full map control there. He was contesting this expansion with the Tesla coil. Fantastic play from both. Uh, unorthodox capping order here from Mo, from what we've seen so far. Also, the Pigeons of War. Yeah, who cares? You were watching this, take notes. Not just taking a jab at him. It's, uh, it's been a fantastic game last week as well, but this one here was just stellar. Stellar mock my uh, yak micro, stellar um, multi pronged attacks from both, and yeah, Barf's tech rush really, really paying off dividends. Ah, shit, I can't access the statistics tab anymore. But last time I checked, he had like 1.5 uh, per like 150% assets killed, regard to um, comparatively speaking to what Mo has killed. So he has traded so well with his tech build there. Uh, the Iron Curtain Rush paying off big time, super great clutch Iron Curtains on both of the players, and fantastic Yak Snipes by Mo. Yeah, great game, hoping for more. Uh, There's gonna be Shattered Paradise I think next week, I'm really hyped to casting this. The Seed Scan on a sent me some great replays. Alright, stay tuned guys, and I'll see you next time. Five Aces, out. Battle Control terminated.